This call is being recorded. All right, all right. Good morning. Hey, Shark, Shark. Welcome to the Shark Leadership Call, the Uplift Breakthrough Leadership Call. This is Coach 100K helping you make six figures in this industry. Guy, we're so excited and delighted to be on the call this morning with you because we understand uh, the power of mentorship. And uh, guys, what a great mentor we have today. I, you know, he's a connector above all connectors. And he's actually got some incredible information for us today. I mean, yesterday was incredible with the rhino. <laughs> incredible, but he's going to take us a little bit higher uh, today. You say, what? Yeah, higher today. We've got a great call for you. So it's going to bring on our international global trainer. This guy is a breakthrough specialist. I mean, he specializes in not only breaking through, but then helping others to break through as well. Written many, many books. One, your breakthrough is guaranteed. Well, then it also to get a guaranteed breakthrough and also how to build a big team fast. That's the question most people, folks want to know. How can I build a big team at all? But then to do it fast, yes, he has the book. He has the information. Let's bring him on right now. Our international global trainer of Uplift as well as Crown 4. That's right, Crown 4, Shop Remote. Dr. Breakthrough, it's breakthrough time, my friend. Shark, shark. Shark, shark. Hey, thank you, Pastor uh, Coach Kenny, Coach 100K, again, man, what an incredible, incredible mandate on your life to empower 100,000 families to create a six-figure or more income through this industry. And so, again, special shout-out to you and the Queen Shark, your dedication, your commitment, and uh, the years and years, uh, of course, making millions in the industry of home-based business, but the years of just building and plowing and uh so we applaud you and appreciate that now folks this is a leadership call and we've got a very special guest who's going to be speaking for the next two days so I, I need you right now to send out a simple text or tweet because i'm going to tell you something dr paul chipman is about to empower you to turbocharge your mind towards success when you hear how he went from being a negative holic <laughs> to thinking right and living right and uh, by the way, you can't do business right unless your mind is right. You can't. So anyway, so I'm going to do our daily breakthrough attitude adjuster, give you a minute to get on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, whatever, and say, look, don't miss this. I've already posted on my Facebook. I've posted in several groups. And uh, I've sent out a couple hundred texts to people this morning. So uh, jump on, jump on, jump on, get people on this call. And by the way, Folks want to know, how do you always do so well in business? Well, first of all, I don't try to get everybody in my business. I bring value to everybody. And when you bring value to people, then all of a sudden they start saying, well, what else do you do? What, 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 I heard them saying something about shop through or something. What, what is that? You know. So I'm telling you, folks, this is a perfect uh, time for you to get people on the call. They'll get blessed. They win. You'll end up getting blessed. Dr. Chipman, of course, he's going to be blessed because, you know, everybody, when you, every speaker, when you speak, you want to speak to more than five people, right? Of course, we've got a whole lot more than that, but I'm saying um, that's, it's going to be a win-win-win. It's my ABCD, my adorable brown caramel delight. We say if it's not win-win-win, we're not in. But when it's win-win-win, we're all the way in. So come on, somebody. Here we go with our attitude adjuster. Get busy texting and tweeting while I do this and get a few more folk on this line, and they will be thanking you, and they'll be glad you did. Wow, what a great day to be alive. I feel dynamite. I like me. I accept me. I love me. I'm going to have a super fantastic day today because I'm too blessed to be depressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too glad to be sad, too anointed to be disappointed, too elated to be agitated. I'm too grounded to be confounded too grateful to be hateful, too gifted to be restricted, too legit to quit, and too saved not to be getting paid. Circumstances are lining themselves in my favor. I am healthy, physically fit, and intellectually equipped. I have wisdom far beyond my years. I'm an extraordinary person with incredible abilities, which I will use to add value to others' lives, knowing that as I help others reach their dreams, I will automatically reach my own. I anticipate meeting the person or group of people today who are willing to use their power, wealth, and influence to empower me to achieve my dreams. All day long, people will go out of their way to bless me. Today, I will add great value to someone's life. I will show compassion to those in need. I will give strength 
to the weak and inspiration to the weary. Someone needs what I have to offer, and I gladly make myself available. I embrace abundance, and it embraces me. I'm abundant in every good way. I am an abundant magnet. I like money, and it likes me. It is attracted to me. It comes abundantly from many sources. I circulate God's money wisely because it's a tool to empower those in need. It's also a way of keeping score of how many people's lives I added value to. I may have been broke, busted, and disgusted, but now I declare that I am rich, growing, and overflowing. My business is booming, and checks are zooming. I'm happy on purpose. I'm experiencing great victories, supernatural turnarounds, and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. I am an overcomer. If my mountain can be removed, I develop and practice my mountain climbing skills. I may experience a setback, but setbacks are only setups for comebacks. Setbacks pave the way for comebacks. I make lemonade out of life's lemons. And if life dares to knock me down, I'll fall on my back realizing as long as I can look up, by the grace of God, I can get up. I commit to paying for my dreams with preparation and perspiration so that I won't have to live with my nightmares of regret. I do not procrastinate because procrastination leads to devastation. It is the assassination of my destination. Thus, I will act now. I'm a doer. I get results that last. I now release the champion that is inside of me. I am the leader that multitudes of people are looking for. I choose to succeed today and every day hereafter. Watch out, world, here I come. Watch out, world, here we come. So let's take a deep breath, symbolizing that we're receiving, that we're breathing in these powerful words that have been spoken over us. So in your nose. All righty, and you can release. Well, thank you very much. And uh, what, a, what a delight and a great joy uh, to have our special guest, uh, Dr. Paul Chipman. As a matter of fact, I learned of him through Dr. Haywood Robinson. I call him the Prince of Preachers, probably perhaps one of the most humble men of God that I know and uh, just, just again, a prince of preachers, an incredible good guy. You know, some folks are great preachers, <clears throat> but they're not good in personality. This guy, he's got it both, and just incredible. And so he called me and connected me with this Dr. Paul Chipman about this book, Think Right, Live Right. And, uh, of course, you, you all know that, you know, as Dr. Breakthrough, I'm all about empowering pre people, you know, to have that breakthrough mentality. And so I said, Doc, yeah, of course, man. And so he connected me. I got the book, started reading. I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, again, my friend, out of all the different books, and I've got them all on the mind, this is my favorite. And this is the guy who wrote it, Dr. Paul Chipman. And so he's not just uh, an incredible man of God, but author, a speaker, a teacher, a trainer, a uh, man of God. Listen, he has a heart for people. And uh, he knows some incredible, incredible facts that he's going to give you. Also, he loves to have fun. And uh, by the way, my friend, he's here <laughs> to teach and train for the next two days. And so to pour out his heart, Dr. Paul Chipman, think right, live right. Take it away, my friend. God bless you. All right. Well, God bless you. You able to hear me, Dr. Stan? Loud and clear, champ. All right, great. Well, God bless you and all those of you who are online. Um, great honor to be here, and um, it's uh, I'm I'm just excited about the opportunity to to speak with you today and kind of share my story with respect to how Think Right Live Right came about. And I want to thank Dr. Stan for this opportunity. Uh, again, we have a mutual friend in Dr. Hayward Robinson, and um, and just by I think it's, it's just definitely a God thing because uh, he told me about Dr. Stan and Dr. Stan. Had a 21-day plan, and then come to find out I got a 21-day plan, and and God is kind of working. So we're collaborating together to uh, to just help free minds. My goal is to kind of come against depression and fear and anxiety, and to and to be able to empower people to think right so they can live right um, here in in 
in nineteen in, in twenty nineteen and as they go on to twenty twenty, they'll be able to have twenty twenty vision. When you think right, you you can live right. And so, um I don't know if you have a question for me, Dr. Stan, or you just want me to kinda of share my story. I'm following yes. your lead. Well, let's start off sharing the story because sure. we got today okay. and we also have tomorrow. But yeah, start okay, sharing great. the story a little bit. Because yeah. I always teach well, every master is once a mess. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, a, a, a few a few days ago. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A hey, um. We are um. Uh, <clears throat> let me get stitch my ears walked in. But anyhow, when my story came about, this book Think Right Live Right came about as a result of uh, experience that I had. Um, I had um, been always very very optimistic person, and things really going extremely well, and then all of a sudden. Through a uh, through some life experiences, you know the uh, uh, loss of some jobs and the ministries that I had started kind of folding, and then and then some lawsuits suits brought against me from the, the former pastor of a church that I used to pastor, and wow. and um, those things over time had a cumulative effect. Because you know a boxer can take a hit in the early round that he can't that he couldn't take it in twelfth round. So about the twelfth round rolled around and got some major hits, and I just couldn't take it because it was just sustained blows, and I was bleeding internally, and I just got to a point where I was just totally negative and totally totally. Uh, I called myself a negaholic, a uh, full fledged negaholic. Uh, in need of detoxification, <laughs> and uh, and so I was just crying, crying out to the Lord, you know, about what's kind of going on, and God is not fair, and you know I'm a man of God, I'm trying to live for you, and everything is going wrong, and uh, and so one day I was just kind of crying out to God, you know, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit, just in, encouraged me to get up off my knees, and just to wipe my tears, get up off my knees, and go go to the bookstore. And I went to a bookstore, and I, and I happened upon a book called uh, Think Right, Live Right. And I looked at that particular book and I said to myself, God, I definitely need to think right because man, I'm 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 I'm, I'm I need a better way to think. That's I'm sorry, the book was entitled A Better Way to Think. And I said, Man, I definitely need a better way to think and I devoured that book and many other books like it and then I began to begin to see more clearly of what was going on. But in the midst of all these difficulties, in the midst of all these blows that I was going through, I had become got angry with God, and I just, you know, say, "Well, God, you and you didn't do things like I wanted to be done, and I'm not talking to you, and I don't care if you don't talk to me anymore, because you know we kind of been there." And then the Lord spoke something to my heart that I never forgot, and He He posed this question. The Holy Spirit posed this question. He said, "Listen, if you get mad at and stop speaking to the God of Heaven, who in hell is going to help you?" And as I pondered that, I said, Lord, God, please forgive me. Whoa, Help me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> say, 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 say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said this. Listen, if you get mad at and stop speaking to the God of heaven, who in the hell is going to help you? And and the profundity of that just sort of hit me. And I just said, Lord, please forgive me. And Lord, I just said, Lord, help me to learn to think right. Learn to think right because my head was so was was swirling and all this negativity and I was in this negative uh, uh, vertex of negativity. It was just pulling me down, pulling me down. And in the midst of all that, the Lord helped me to see that. Listen, all these negative thoughts that you are are struggling with, when you begin to analyze them, they fall into five categories. And and the Lord through the process gave me this this what I call the filthy five. The filthy five. And I want you to jot these things down because these were the five thoughts because we oftentimes hear about we needing to take various thoughts captive, but we many times don't know exactly what those thoughts are. And so these filthy five are those five thoughts that keep us in negativity, keep our minds bound in negativity. And so I use for the help, for the help to help the brain memorize, I use acrostic first, but I spell it a little differently, F U. R S T. So if you have a pencil, jot down F in in, in a um in in a vertical line. F U R S T. And this is what I found out. I call them the filthy five. These were the thoughts that had that had robbed me of my joy and of, of my zest in life. The first thought that was robbing me was fear of the future. Jot that down. Fear of the future. Thought pops into your into into your mind. Well, what if I can't pay this bill? And what if I don't get that job? And what if I don't perform as well I would like to on this particular job? It's fear of the future. What if I can't get my kids in school or pay my college tuition? And fear of the future will keep you bound in negativity. Okay? The the next of the filthy five I used a little U and that's unhealthy comparisons. 
unhealthy comparisons. That's the whole aspect of what what the um, <laughs> uh, uh, what keeps us bound in compa- unhealthy comparisons. You know, you have a nice car, but your neighbor gets another car. Trying to keep it with the Joneses. You know, we have the cell phones. You know, you got you know the iPhone one, two, three. They're around iPhone ten, eleven now. What they do? Unhealthy comparisons. They just change one or two little things, but now you got to have it, you got to have it, and these unhealthy comparisons. You know, you're doing well, but you're not doing quite as well as the guy beside you. And these unhealthy comparisons, you see, they are they are very uh, unhealthy because of the fact when we compare ourselves to people who we feel we're doing better than, then we get a little boost to our ego. But when we compare ourselves to people who we feel are doing better than us, then it's a depletion of our ego, you see? And so we have fear of the future. We have unhealthy comparisons, and one of the biggest ones right here is this one, regrets of the past, regrets of the past. Man, what a bad decision to make. If I hadn't made that financial decision, man, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be on Paradise Island now. You know, if I hadn't married the wrong person, you know, if I, if I hadn't, you know, gone down such and such a place, you see what I mean? And these regrets of the past, and what had happened in my life was I had just become, my mind had become inundated with unhealth with, with with regrets of the past. What if I hadn't left that church? You see, and and, and um what if I had not um said that to such and such a person? I would have perhaps found more favor. And those regrets of the past drag you down. And then after regrets of the past and we're already beginning to, to regret and feel down, they lead into self condemning thoughts. Self-condemning thoughts. How could I have been so stupid? And, man, they said I was a knucklehead. Heard all my life, I must really be. I'm no good. And the devil would then jump on my back and say, you know, you are a pitiful excuse for a Christian. Look at you. Lost a job. You're now you're in a church. You know, you're, you're struggling financially. And so these self-condemning thoughts come about, and they begin to bombard your mind and, you know, just feeling low as you can go. And then when you're feeling down, it makes you more susceptible to the last of the filthy five temptations. You see, so I'm already feeling down. So instead of eating one donut, I'm eat the whole box. <laughs> I'm eat the whole box of donuts, okay? And so instead of taking one drink, you know, I'm 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 gonna drink the whole bottle. You see, and what happens is we then resort to those things that that will bring us down, that will reinforce our subconscious beliefs about who we truly are. And so what the Lord helped me to see was that, listen, if you can begin to capture and begin to check, challenge, and change, hear me out now, this is the thought management strategy. If you can begin to identify the filthy five when they come into your mind and then begin to check, challenge, and change those thoughts, you will then begin to get victory over your thought life. In fact, you'll learn to control your thoughts rather than your thoughts controlling you. And that was the major breakthrough that happened for me. And so the, the, God so designed your brain in such a way that your brain cannot think of two conscious thoughts simultaneously. Okay? So so w- the beautiful thing about checking, challenging, and changing your thoughts is this, that each time you take a moment to, to ask yourself the question, what kind of thought is this, what happens is it keeps the next negative thought from coming. Because now you've taken some time, and your brain is, inter- is, is being entertained by another thought. Therefore, the next thought cannot come in. And so what happens is you begin to slow down your thoughts. Because some of you may be right now listening and say, man, my thoughts come so fast and curious. Well, this is a way to slow them down so you can begin to think about what you're thinking about. And then you can learn to take those thoughts captive. I call them the filthy five. Fear of the future, unhealthy comparisons, regrets of the past, self-condemning thoughts, and temptations of all kinds. And that, and those were the thoughts I needed to take captive, and those were the thoughts that were keeping me in in a negative place. Does that make sense to you, Doctor Stan? Wow! And all our wow, listeners. Wow, is, yes, man, that's so yes, powerful. Sir. That's so on point, and um, incredible, incredible. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm telling you, these these filthy five have probably destroyed more people than anything yeah, yeah. else. With out of doubt. In fact, those. Yeah, you, go ahead. You put this. Yeah, you you put this so on point and so succinctly. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, I, I think I personally think everyone who calls themselves a leader is part of Shark Nation, is part of the Breakthrough Bible Dream Team. I think this is a book that you must have 
he just gave you one little piece. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what this, yeah, what this book is, but he, he did it in such a condensed fashion. And uh, and Doc, as a matter of fact, um, folks, I am telling you, like I'm telling people that have taken my 21 Day Breakthrough Challenge, this is the companion. This is the book you need to have. This, this, I'm telling you. Because, again, remember, every master was once a mess. Therefore, every mess can one day be a master. And, this, and, and people get messed up because of their thoughts. Like you said, Doc, that fear of the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. how many, so many people go into anxiety and depression over, over, over things they think could happen that never even happened. But now because they're thinking on it so much, they start bringing it to pass. Job said the thing that mm-hmm. I feared the most has come upon me, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. it wasn't even going to happen. But now it's hmm. going to happen because they created it. Well, real quick, I, I want to, uh, I want um, I call the Prince of Preachers, Dr. Haywood Robinson. He's an ambassador here, and I want him to say a word because he's the way and the reason I met you. Uh, Dr. Haywood has such an incredible heart, and uh, you know, I people call me the master connector, but this guy connects people like crazy as well. Dr. Haywood, man, is this incredible stuff? Information or what? Good morning, <clears throat> Stan, and good morning to. All of our uplift um, brothers and sisters, uh, and I want to thank you for trusting me and recommending Dr. Chipman. And uh, yes, he has given us uh, outstanding, uh, succinct uh, nuggets this morning that we can readily understand and rapidly apply. And I appreciate him uh, sharing today, and particularly so because my family had the privilege of being very close to his family during many of those years that he described as those painful, bitter, difficult years. Um, Their ministry in Baltimore and just watching him work through and worship through and live through those challenges and to see how God birthed such a powerful and pregnant resource uh, out of his pain and past is just remarkable. And to hear the confidence with which he was speaking today and sharing today, uh, being aware of those struggles of the past is just a testimony to the grace of God, to the goodness of God, but also to the plan of God, because God knew he had this impulse in Dr. Chipman all the time. But uh, it was going to take some some pain and discomfort in getting him to a place, almost like Job, as I listened to him this morning, almost like Job. Job had a lot of wonderful things to say about God when he initially was was engaged in the struggle. But as Paul said, as, as he started to wear down from the rounds, uh, it wasn't until Job really challenged God that he got this breakthrough. And we all know God never really answered his question, but because he dared to really challenge God, God then began to challenge him. And Paul had a similar turnaround moment when he dared to challenge and had negative thoughts of God, and God challenged him. And out of that comes this resource that we um, have benefited from this morning. I want to encourage everyone to secure it and to share it, promote it, because every friend you know, every family member you have, every person, mentor, leader, uh, deals with these kinds of issues. And uh, the Lord has just allowed Paul to uh, capture it uh, with such a blend, a unique blend of science and scripture and spirit. So thank you for uh, trusting him, and thank you, Dr. Chipman, for uh, making the connection and making the investment in us today. Uh, it's a re- remarkable resource, as is he. And so I just want to thank you. want to encourage everyone to take full advantage. Pastors who are on the line, if you can invite Dr. Chipman to come your way and to provide a seminar or to preach. Uh, he preached for us recently and just really wild and uh, blessed our people. So I just want to encourage that. Uh, connection for all of us, uh, because this particular body of information is useful across the globe. Thank you, uh, Dr. Breakthrough. 
Wow, yeah, powerful wow. wow. Y'all see why I call him the Prince of Preachers? He wasn't even preaching. He was talking. He was going out my he worked through. He worshipped through. I'm like, I'm writing this down. I'm preaching that. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Hey, I want to say this too, man. Dr. Hayward, man, he brought tears to my eyes because he believed it was he who, who uh, he and I held many times that we prayed through those times. And Doc was always there for me. And just um, just being a, a friend, man, and just being a friend like no other. And so I just thank you for your words, Dr. Robinson, and just knowing that, um, you know, you, you were there for me and just cause saw me through, prayed me through. And so thank you, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yes, well, you know, Dr. Haywood was there many years ago when, you know, a company snatched the rug from me underneath me where, I was making six figures a month, and then uh, they had some problems with the company, and and it was like overnight I went from six figures a month to zero. Um, <laughs> I'd make mm. you catch up on your prayer life. <laughs> <laughs> Quit fasting in a hurry. <laughs> but but, but uh, um, Dr. Willis Jolly, who said uh, nobody cares about your bills except you and the people you owe, but I found out that's not always true. <laughs> Because uh, Dr. Haywood, Haywood was there to, to listen and to encourage and uh, uh, just incredible. But I'm going to read a quick scripture here, Second Corinthians 1, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse, excuse me, 3. Uh, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Some of you are hurting this morning. and Some of you are connected to people who are hurting. He's the God of all comfort. And here's what it says, verse 4 who comforted us in all our tribulation, not from, but in all our tribulation. So when you're in the midst of tribulation, you need to start looking for that comfort because the comfort's not going to come until you get in the tribulation. And it says that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort where what we ourselves are comforted of God. And so that's what Dr. Chipman is doing now. He, he's, he was going through his tribulation, and, and, I, and we all still have issues and things happen. But what I'm saying is, and so God has this unique way of taking your mess and turning it into a message, of, of taking, taking your trials and making you triumph. And watch this, my friend, and taking the things that happen to you that you just can't think. Dr. Chipman, I'm sure back then you probably thought, man, there's, there's just no way out of this, man. All these losses yeah. and all this struggle and all this. It's just like you said. It's just done. It's like, it's like no, you know. But look where you are now. So, folks, this week, that's why I'm telling you, you got to see. Sometimes you need the call, and other times the call needs you. Sometimes so you just don't know, my friend. That's why I'm saying anything you can attend, where because your next breakthrough is just one little piece that you might be missing, and you don't know where it's going to come from. And matter of fact, it might be on the call tomorrow when Dr. Chipman comes back. So listen, if I were you, I would repack these lines and bring folks out. And uh, again, I'm holding, I'm holding in my hand this powerful book. Um, matter of fact, uh, Dr. Falwell said, my friend Paul Chipman has developed a wonderful resource to help each of us discover the peace that passeth all understanding. I encourage you to read this book and then to share it with others. Uh, you know, uh, this, this powerful forward by Dr. Tony Evans. I mean, uh, just, oh, my goodness. It, folks, I'm telling you, it's people who are hurting and people that don't, you don't understand. You're not alone. You're not alone. That's the trick of the devil to make you think you're alone, to make you think you can't make it through. And you just heard a living epistle, a living testimonial of someone, my friend, again, Sometimes, you know, we, get, we have to hit rock bottom to find out that he's the rock at the bottom. But it's all based <laughs> on your thoughts. So, see, if you can think right when everything is going wrong. Oh, come on, somebody. I said if you can learn to think right in spite of the fact that everything seems to be going wrong, then I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to be all right. So, so you, you are embarking upon one of the greatest secrets of all success people, and that is this. They discipline their thought life. They discipline. See, there's some things I want to allow myself to think. Now, now, is the thought not try to come? Oh, yes, of course. But see, you got to learn to be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I was listening, uh, a gentleman is talking about he is sued. Now, listen to this, a $100 million lawsuit. And so a lot of people, his friends and, and people he had influenced in ministry called him and like, well, how are you doing? And here's what he said. I want to quote it to you because this is so apropos to what Dr. Shipman spoke on this morning and what his book, Think Right, Live Right, 
a 21-day plan to overcome negative thoughts. And uh, this summarizes it. He said, how are you doing? A $100 million lawsuit. What? How are you doing? And here's what he said. Quote, it doesn't matter how things are. Write that down if you, unless you're driving. It doesn't matter <clears throat> how things are. Here it is now. It only matters how I am. Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't matter how things are. It only matters how I am. And, of course, you know I am. He's always there. But the I am is in us, and the I am. And, and, and what Dr. Tittman is teaching you, my friend, through this book, it is how to make your thoughts coincide with the I am because the I am is the ever present one, everything you need. But, but again, our, it, Satan gets us to think off of that. And so it doesn't matter how things are. It only matters how I am. And it's powerful. So Coach 100K, come on out, man. I know, oh, my goodness, uh, this is, was this rich? Is this, and, and by the way, this is just a, y'all, wait a minute. Y'all better wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Coach, what you got to say, Doc? God, my God, you don't want to get me started on this this morning. You want me to just be quiet right now because this was some good stuff. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Doctor, I appreciate you, man. Listen, what what, what, what I what I what I heard? I got so many notes here. Thank you for, for making us check challenge to change. And what I heard about the fifty five here was that it immobilizes and paralyzes. And, you know, being a breakthrough, especially like that the breakthrough is, and being able to go through over 100 opportunities like I have to finally get to breakthrough. Uh, breaking through is about momentum, and these filthy five will stop your momentum. And I thought mm-hmm. about it. I thought about it from this angle here. I thought about F-U-R-S-T, and then, so uh, when you were speaking, of, you know, the fear, what if, okay? And so... Here, what happens in network marketing? I was thinking, man, what if I don't make? What, what if I can't recruit three people? What, what, what if I can't, man? What if I, you know, if I don't make it? Then that's followed up by comparison. Well, that breakthrough doing good, man. What's wrong with me? I mean, well, I, mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah. Comparison, then that goes into regret because now you're proving to yourself your first thought of fear. I, I see. I, mm-hmm. I, I tell y'all, I wasn't gonna make it, man. Boy, I tell you, you know. But then you go into uh, the self-condemning um, thoughts. Man, you know what? I ain't no good at this. I, who was I fooling to think I could do something like this? Wow. Then <laughs> the temptation is, I ain't never doing this again, right? Because <laughs> that, that, way, that way the devil won't you at right there when you said, man, I ain't never trying no easy. Then now, the, the right thing comes along. He said, no, 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 I promise myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, unpromise yourself. <laughs> you know? But anyway... <laughs> Man, it's so much in what you talk about is so much that it's caused even believers to be in depression because of yeah. the hope for the future, man. And this, this is, man, I'm getting the book. I'm, everybody, everybody need to get the book. <laughs> I'm telling you right <laughs> Thank you. Everybody. Thank, everybody. You for, thank you for going through this for us. Amen. Well, I I appreciate that because, uh, you know, what always helped me to see in the midst of it all was that I had thought God had rejected me, but God said, no, I haven't rejected you. I just redirected you. <laughs> I just redirected you. I redirected you. And many times we're going through struggle. We're going through to problems and what God is doing, He's redirecting us into another path. And you remember the story about Peter. Jesus said to Peter, He said, said Peter, Satan has desired to sift thee as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you're strengthened, and, and, and when you have re- re- returned, then strengthen your brethren. And so what God let me see, this is my time now to strengthen the brethren with respect to what God brought me through. And as Dr. Stan said, God will take your misery and turn it into your ministry. He'll take your test and make it into a testimony. And as the passage he read there in Corinthians, uh, he said that now that... May you receive comfort from the God of comfort, who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we can comfort others with the same comfort. And that's what God's doing in my life now, able to comfort others with the comfort that, he, that I receive from God so that they then in turn will be able to comfort others. You see? And that's, this is what this ministry is all about, strengthening others so that they can then in turn 
receive the comfort from God, comfort others, and then it goes on and on and on. Because a lot of people don't realize, but, you know, in this particular uh, book, I may mention the fact that the Harvard School of Public Health and the World Health Organization states that by 2020, depression is expected to be the world's second leading cause of disability. Second wow. only to cardiovascular disease. You see that? And so there's an epidemic out there. And the more people who get equipped with this knowledge and this understanding, the more they will be able to be able to help and to be a, a conduit of God's grace and hope, an installation of hope, uh, that uh, that there is indeed hope, that it's not hopeless, as I oftentimes say. There are no hopeless situations, just people who have grown hopeless about the situation. Ooh, and uh, that's what that uh, that's, that's what that's the heart of it. So, so 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 Doc, somebody wants to get a hold of you. Somebody wants. I mean, I know they can get on Amazon, but but it probably won't be autographed and all that. So how do they get a hold of the book? Get a hold of you if they want you to speak or whatever. What's the best way to contact you? How, what do we do? Okay, well I'm, I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna, I'm gonna at this juncture the book just came out here in in um, I think uh, about August. And so um, at this particular juncture, the, the only really avenue right now is going to be through Amazon.com. Uh, you know, Amazon Books is one particular uh, uh, spot. Also, um, I'm, I'm going to give you um, another number where you can contact me. So that's one. And also you can get to some some stuff from me as well. And so I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you my um, – uh, I have a uh, I have a website address and also going to give you here right over here my cell personal cell number. You want to call and we're going to set up something for me to come to your church or whatever. So we're going to do a couple of things. So we have I have a website called uh, www.thinkrightliveright.com. That's www.thinkrightliveright.com, and you'll see the book there listed. Whatever that's one avenue you can get it. Also, I want to give you my my cell personal cell number. That's eight zero four. I'm in the Richmond, Virginia area, but I'll travel to any place. 804-387-9129. That's 804-387-9129. And you can just give me a call at that particular number um, for for additional books, additional information about the books, opportunity to come and to speak and to share um, with you uh, and with your congregation. I just came back from Dallas, Texas not long ago, a Christian Stronghold Church, and did a, a, a Think Right, Live Right revival Wednesday through Sunday and shared the principles from this particular book. And and God moved in such a way that it was, it was, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I stood in awe just to see how God was working, how he was delivering and setting people free. Because, you know, you can do a revival and give them a one good sermon, but the beautiful thing about this is you can preach for the whole week, and then each day they have a book they can pick up, and they can begin reading further and further, getting more information, scientific information, scriptural information, psychological information, and the deliverance comes through a process, much like when Jesus told the, the lepers who, who wanted to get healing. He says, he says, he says, you know, go show yourself to the priest, and then as they went, they were healed. And that's what the 21-day plan does. As you're going, day by day, as you're learning these thought management processes and, and strategies, you're being healed day by day as you're going. And um, the book's helpful, and just like as as Doctor Stan's 21 day plan, these two these two work in tandem to bring about the breakthrough, mental breakthrough, so you can think right and and live and begin to live right according to to God's word and, and His standards. And I got a whole bunch more to, to share with you tomorrow. We we just dealt with one of, of the 21 concepts <laughs> today. <laughs> this thing is loaded. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm I'm coming back, Doc. I'm coming back. And I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. 